now you're up to date on News Talk. The Football Show on Off the Ball with Paddy Power, the greatest football partnership since Jeff and Heskey. I prepared to end it my can. Well, do it then. Again. Do it then. What about your start to the game? I was, it wasn't bad, was it? <laughs> Why should there be an honest answer be a mistake? How can a modern day manager not have a mobile phone? Why should he? Oh. Welcome along, Joe Malloy here, Johnny Ward alongside me. We've got live football this evening on the football show. Liverpool 2 0 up away to West Ham. Mo Salah with a penalty on 35 minutes. Alex Oxlade Chamberlain with a second on 52 minutes. That should push Liverpool 19 points clear of Manchester City, who themselves are in action this evening. They are 1 0 down to Manchester United. Maddich with a really good strike for United in the first half on 35 minutes from a set piece, ball bends to him and it was a half volley daisy cutter type thing into the bottom corner. So they're 1-0 up United. On aggregate that leaves them 3-2 down. They need one more goal, obviously can't concede. No away goals in this competition, so it would be straight to penalties. As I was saying to you earlier, I'm a fan of this rule. Injury time ain't my thing. Mm. Let's get to penalties. Unless we're talking World Cup final territory or something Arsenal here. v Man U. Yeah, I can live with that. But Carabao Cup semi-final, I don't need another 20 minutes of this in my life, half an hour. Mm, it, it is also, as when, you, when, you're, when you're a sports journalist, you know, eventually you kind of just want to go home. Late or at night. And, and see the penalties. And see the penalties, yeah. Penalties are good. Um, we will, uh, in a couple of minutes time, be talking to the BBC's Adam Pope, always a really good contributor, based up in Leeds. Uh, Leeds won 3-2 against Middlesbrough, or Millwall, excuse me, last night, and then Cardiff beat West Brom 2-1. Uh, the amazing thing here is that Leeds and West Brom have gone off a cliff, really. So <laughs> It's happening again. Yeah. If you combine them, and they were flying, they have had a run of just two wins before last night. Two wins in their last 15 combined matches. That is absolutely mad. Hmm. Um, I, I've, I have a few mates who are long-suffering Leeds fans. As they tell me they're kind of men in their 50s kind of which is fairly consistent and we, we we've gone to they're mainly racing people but uh they're they're like kids they're buzzing and we went to a game in the majeski stadium during cheltenham last year and leeds were leeds won three nil and they were unbelievable the mm. football they played and the energy of their football and i, I remember coming away thinking god I, i'm actually really looking forward to seeing them i think they'll make a right go of it in the premier league mm. the problem the, the I have a theory with the playoffs in, 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 in England. I think if you if you psychologically fall into third place, having blown, I think you're far better off finishing sixth after kind of scraping in. Because uh, I think psychologically it, it makes a massive difference. And if either of these teams doesn't finish in the top two, which could well happen. Mm. Um, now, I, I hope for, with Darrow Shea getting a new deal at West Brom, I think, um, you know, it, it, Obviously, it'll be great for him to get that step up and see. But for Bielsa, like and for Leeds, Leeds one club city. Um, what the thirty six thousand at the game last night? I think against Millwall. Um, you know, I think they don't have any Irish players. Bamford hasn't declared, but I, I would love to see them. And I, I love Bielsa. He's just the ultimate eccentric. Mm. When you watch a game, he's just kind of. He, he kind of like hunches down in a kind of a squat position, or he has a little stool. Almost too low for my liking. Yeah, it's almost like. For some reason, he thinks he can watch the game. Like you see, the manager go up to the stand. Bielsa thinks I'm actually too high by just standing up on the sideline. Hmm. But he's uh, he's the ultimate, the ultimate um, mad football coach, I suppose. Mad but really likable. Adam Pope will join us maybe ten minutes time or so. So if you have any questions, Leeds fans, we can put them to Adam. Ed Woodward's at the game this evening. So Manchester United have condemned the attack on Ed Woodward's home. Between twenty and thirty fans reportedly threw flares at Woodward's house last night. The video was titled Ed Woodward's Gonna Die. Ed Woodward has, has uh, young twins and a wife. They weren't at the house. None of them were at the house. The fans were in balaclavas. They rang the intercom outside his house and then proceeded to throw the flares into the property after receiving no answer. Manchester United, uh, aware of the incident, they've said that anybody found guilty will be banned for life by the club. Police may get involved. There are just some idiots in the world. There are, yeah, and a lot of them, a lot of them football fans. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know if Matt, everyone listening in had the pleasure to watch James McLean or the interview he, he gave yesterday. Yeah. But um, I actually stumbled upon it because I think I think Richie put up a tweet saying, "Oh, James McLean is on now." So I came in in the middle of when he was talking about uh, Nathan was. We've seen Nathan uh, trying to get a good 
uh, kind of response from someone. If we would go back to uh, Christian Eriksen when he asked him after the Ireland game, you know, what about your club future? And Eriksen walked away in him. Uh, but Nathan was right. His club future wasn't out as it turned out. But anyway, he was asking him about... Um, the FAI and then the League of Ireland. But then he got to talking about his autistic daughter. Mm -hmm. And uh, you just think, like, this guy, the abuse this guy gets for having um, a stance on where he was from and having um, just taken, not, not being, like, part of the herd that just goes along and doesn't think about, you know, what you what you do in life and whether you just go along with the consensus. He has a stance on, on wearing a poppy and he's absolutely vilified for it. And that's, you know, a lot of football fans just, I don't know. Mm. It's just pretty stupid. Yeah, it was a bit grim. Because I saw Gary Lineker first tweeted saying, surely this is not real. And then a few minutes later, he's saying, I'm told it is real. So mm. It's uh, the family as well, you know, in a situation like yeah. that. I did, I did have sympathy for John Delaney's family over this the last year that's gone. They had no role in the demise of the FBI and whatever. And um, I, I don't think we think of that, the human cost, when there's so much vilification. And obviously, James McLean spoke about that as well. Mm. His family having to deal with death threats or whatever, as it, as it is filtering down from him getting those threats and so forth. Yeah, well, Woodward's at the game this evening. He wasn't at the house when it happened, so that's where that is. Uh, one thing you had flagged, by the way, so this is starting to kind of crop up and rear its head now as we head for January 21st. I heard you mention this a long time ago and saw a piece in the 42 today about it as well. Uh, UK clubs now very concerned that they will not be able to sign Irish players under the age of 18 or frankly any European Union players under the age of 18 after Brexit and it seems like that will be the case. Maybe there will be some negotiation of some sort or some exception made but it seems like that will be the case. So from an English club's point of view they're all very concerned obviously but from an Irish point of view isn't this interesting timing as the game yeah, has been courtesy of the FAI's demise forced it is. to reevaluate what it's going to do and now on top of that Brexit is going to force the Irish game mm. in, uh, to change its approach because suddenly you have all this talent that won't be going anywhere and you have to cater for it. Yeah, it's it's funny sometimes you you know you you come up with um, or you fall upon stories and you think they're gonna they're gonna have a big sort of traction and they don't. I remember Dan McDonald was on about the time he did this massive work on the Vantage uh, tickets at at the Aviva Stadium and he did this big story and he wrote about his social and he's like right this is this is gonna blow the lid blow off the, the whole thing and yeah. nothing happened nothing like there was basically a couple of follow-ons but nothing happened and. You could. I remember talking about this, and he, he was. He, you could sense the frustration that Christ. I really thought that it take off, whatever. Now this is at a much lower level, but I remember we had Laura McCallum, who's a Scottish um, sports lawyer, um, legal specialises in sports law, and we had her on. I don't know when that was. Must have been sometime last year, anyway. And she came on. And she just explained. There were a lot of Brexit deadlines. So Brexit, like, I was saying this actually to Dan today, I was like, did anyone vote for or against Brexit thinking that there might be repercussions for Premier League clubs in terms of the sign of underage players? Probably not, not one person, I'd say. Because uh, a lot of, the, maybe it wasn't explained very well. But Laura basically made the point, there's no way that they can sign anyone outside the UK once, because they're, they're out of the EU, they cannot sign anyone um, as a minor. Mm. So... I was sort of thinking of this and I was like, well, there's no history of Irish minors going anywhere else. Like, I mean, we've the odd player um, playing continental Europe and, but it's obviously a complete outlier. Um, and, you know, in, in the sense of the, the League of Ireland developing players more so in the last few years, uh, I was thinking this is a massive chance for the government to really back football in this country. Mm -hmm. And granted, a lot of the League of Ireland clubs are not equipped for academies yet or they're not equipped for... Um, to properly have under 13, 15, 17, 19 teams with all the coach and travelling and blah, 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 that entails. But this is a massive opportunity. Like, our kids kind of have to stay here. And I've made this point before. I, I thought it should have been something of a national scandal that we had to send all our kids as 14, 15, 16, 17 year olds away from their homes to England. And the, like, what, one, one or two percent actually make it. And so many of them come back with serious, serious problems where they feel that they've failed. Um, well, they clearly haven't failed. They're just part of the, the system that's globalised and Irish players find it more and more difficult. And nobody just seemed to, to stop and think, like, is this normal? Like, should, should our kids not be educated here? Should we not be able to provide them with a proper platform here? So at least leave when they're 18 or 17 or 18. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's... It, 
a lot of the challenges for managers over here was to get the kids back and tell them that they hadn't been failures. And a lot of them just fall out of the game. They fall out of love with it. Yeah. Um, but nobody seemed to care. Like, how many politicians in this country really care about what pathway our football? And football is the most participation sport in our country, yet we're sending all these players away to Britain. Um, I, 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 I remember when I was 15 going to America for the summer and I was really, really homesick. And I was only going for a few, like a couple of months, really homesick. They were going over there, they could be going to a small town you know, in the north of England, away from their families, where they have an awful lot of time on their hands, and they really struggle, and they they may lose their ability to play football to the ability that they should be able, because mentally they're not right, and we have a massive opportunity in this country to develop football academies so that we're creating an industry, we're, we're creating jobs for bus drivers, we're creating jobs for the people who make the tea and make the food for them, we're creating jobs for coaches. A lot of the League of Ireland coaches are part-time, they're doing it for nothing. Um, but there's no, there doesn't seem to be any real political will. I've seen Aidan O'Reardon from Labour pipe up a little bit and say stuff, but there's no political will out there. And Football has been failed by, government, by politicians in this country. You look at racing and the greyhound industry, how well racing has lobbied for the value of, of of racing, but football, to my mind, has been failed, and I don't know. I, I don't know what's what's going to happen, but this is huge. It is huge, and I think a lot of the kids who went over to UK clubs have been failed as well because so many of them left school after their junior cert. Their education wasn't catered for, and that seemed like an unnecessary risk given the odds of making it. That they were so slim, and I, I it never made sense to me that we couldn't find a situation where we could look after them here, we could develop them here, and on the education front it was just seen as well unfortunately that's just the way it has to be because your only option is to go to the UK and he, like even my generation it never sat right and maybe you understand back in the day in John Giles generation we were less au fait with the ills of the world and the best way to raise our kids but I, I couldn't believe that even up until now 13 14 15 year olds are being packed off to academies and just it's best to look kid. it's just not best practice I think that may have changed been coming to a head anyway I think this might have accelerated it by like a generation. Yeah, I, I, I mean, you know, we, we did a piece in the LOI Weekly podcast with, the, with uh, Lee Desmond last year who spoke about his going over to Newcastle and uh, the educational side of it, it's kind of a box ticking exercise for the clubs yes, over there. Yes, it is, absolutely. Um, they, they do not care and I, if you no. emerge educated. And le let's be honest, the, 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 the clubs, even League of Ireland clubs, their interest is what you can do as a footballer on 90 minutes every week. Um, whether you're good at maths or, or English is, is no use to them whatsoever. Mm. So they're going to, I'm not really blaming the clubs over there, it's more so the culture, but like Neil Farouja, um, who in fairness would have would have played more for Ireland's under 21s uh, this season, except he got injured. But he decided not. He wasn't going to England. He was going to get his education over here. He's a bright kid, and uh, I've seen a bit more of that where players are conscious. I want to get at least my leaving. Sort John O'Shea did. not John O'Shea, stayed, yeah. Um, because it's very hard, and for the parents as well, who are probably kind of adduced into a situation where, you know, I should send my kid over, it's his golden chance, and at 14, what are you going to say? Um, but the players now who go over and have played in the League of Ireland, like, they, they're, they're playing men's football as well, they're battle-hardened, and, you know, I've seen Jack Byrne speak very, very emotionally about it as well, the, the value of, him and Jack, Danny Mandrew came back, both of them living with their mothers, and they, they, they actually just love being at home with their family. And we have, a, we have that's one thing the League of Ireland has. I, I would, if I were offered twice the money I'm on now to live in Rotherham, and I, no disrespect to Rotherham, but to live in a, a town in England that I didn't know, I want to live in Ireland. I want to be around my family. I wouldn't do it. I want, to, I, want to, I want to live here and I want to kind of be around my family and be around Irish people because that's how I've been brought up. I don't really want to move abroad. And I imagine a lot of footballers are like that. It's just they don't see any other option. Um, but the kids to have to go, Joe, I think, the government and whatever, you know, elected representative is say, this has to stop. It shouldn't be like this. We should, we failed, we failed young footballers in this country that they have to immigrate to better themselves because that should not be like that. Mm. Let's go to the BBC's Adam Pope, who is on the line. So Leeds beat Millwall, as we mentioned, 3-2. Cardiff beat West Brom, 2-1. Where that leaves the championship table is that Leeds are on 55 points. West Brom are two points back on 53 points. And Nottingham Forest are, are only on 51. Four off Leeds, two off West Brom. And then you've got Fulham on 49. So, Adam, it's good to talk to you again. Uh, this has been kind of an extraordinary fall off in form, and we were told... Well, certainly the hope was this wouldn't happen once again to Leeds. Yeah, before last night, a run of just two wins in their past 15 combined matches has uh, set nerves on edge, to say the least. 
So talk to us about Leeds and Bielsa and what's been going on in your view. Well, you're right to say that there was uh, an edginess and an anxiety ahead of the game yesterday because that gap that had been in double figures had been reduced. And, uh, of course, Millwall is always quite a tense game with Leeds anyway. But the first time that I can recall that both sides have gone in in this division in, well, both of the hopes of promotion, Millwall were knocking on the, on the playoff door. So with that, there was a lot to play for sort of everything that goes around the Leeds-Millwall game anyway. But more importantly, that Leeds had to win the game. They've not been playing badly. It's this, they just can't finish. That's been the whole issue for Leeds. And, of course, the defence have got leakier. So that's the scenario that they've been in for a little while. Last night, um, I mean, it was an upside-down game. But overall, Leeds could have won that sort of 6-3. You know what I mean? So right. they're still creating all the chances. They actually put some away yesterday. That, that was the difference. Uh, sorry to interrupt. We've just seen um, Matic, who <laughs> was the hero yeah. in the first half. I don't know if you're watching, Popey. Matic, he's done this ridiculously cynical trip to stop a Man City attack, but he's on a yellow card. What are you doing, son? <laughs> what are you doing? And, the, you know, the hero in the first half, he's had a difficult season. He's come back in. What is he doing here? This is just so cynical and silly. <laughs> and he's just, oh, he's just taking him out of the game. Anyway. United down to 10 men, 15 minutes to go, and they need a goal. Matic walks off. Oh, what are you doing? Solskjaer gives him a high five. Don't worry about it. How would Bielsa head. react to that? Bielsa would be, oh, this yeah. is mad. <laughs> he doesn't, do you know what? Even if he brings a substitute off, he doesn't really engage with them, to be honest. Mm. And, and, and do you know that is interesting? I mean, he, look, he, he, he defends his players, but he's very, very honest. The thing I like about, about Bielsa, when you, he can do this thing after a game, say there's been a lot of incident like there was last night, and say there'd been a sending off or something like that. He analyzes a game so quickly afterwards, it's all. And he does it so calmly and so rationally and so accurately, I think. It's almost like he's had two days to, to consider it. And I don't know any other coach that can do that. So he would not treat, he would not get emotional about something like that. He really wouldn't. Mm. Um, the, the, he really the, wouldn't. The, the incident to him is just noise and irrelevant. <laughs> I think he's probably just about seeing everything, isn't he? And, and certainly when it comes down to, say, a refereeing incident or something like that, like, and there was plenty last night. He really doesn't go down that track of blaming officials or diverting attention away from, uh, you know, from from what really has gone on. I mean, look, clearly from what you're saying there, there's there's no there's no no doubt that the guy's got to walk, you know. So, mm. but yeah, so it would be yeah, he just doesn't get emotional about stuff. He does about other stuff, you know. But uh, but yeah, when it comes to sort of game stuff and especially officials, he's very very calm, very very sort of um, very rational, and it's it's almost like. He won't criticise them. They've got the most difficult job in the world. He will mm. not criticise officials in any way. Other Leeds managers in the past have done exactly that. Do, do you think, Adam, that um, last season is going to have some sort of bearing on the dressing room? Obviously, so many players still there. They, With all due respect, they kind of did blow it last season. And mm. coming to this situation, as you know, 20, like 55 points top of the table after 29 games is pretty low. Um, mm. And, you know, it's it's been a particularly basket case championship this season but do you think for all of Bielsa's greatness and his madness mentally how strong and fortitude in terms of their mental strength will be there at the end of the season I think last season certainly is it was it was a big big learning curve for them and the way it imploded not just in the playoffs but that that Easter weekend when they lost to Wigan and, and Brentford and, and really blew automatic promotion they will be stronger for it so yeah it is going to help don't forget, Bielsa is the first to say that he's not won that much in his career, but he won't, and he won't change the way he approaches it. He's a mentally strong guy to the point of, you know, where he can, even at 63, he devotes, you know, 24/7 himself to making the team better, but always playing in the same way. So everybody knows what to expect this season. That's been the big difference, um, and it is a massive spur. Don't get me wrong; it's a massive spur to, to get this one over the line after what happened last year. You're right; they did bottle it at the end. There's no other way of describing it. And this season, let's hope they get themselves in a position where they can just stretch at the top of the table. It's still there to be done, by the way. It is. And, and I do agree with you. This season has been even more basket case than, than ever in the championship. And, you know, since Leeds have come back out of League One, every year, maybe not always for Leeds, it's been up for grabs for anybody. It's mm. very rare that a team has really run away with it. Maybe Newcastle Wolves. Um, but most years... There's six or seven teams can get themselves in the frame for promotion. And this year is, is the prime example. So it's very doable. So, like, this conversation is kind of born out of 
I think, our admiration for Bielsa and wanting to yeah. see him in the Premier League. That's why we're all so interested in this guy and have been for a long time. I, I mean, we used the phrase there that they bottled last year. How sure are we that they didn't get tired and that isn't happening again? Like, again, just for people who aren't following it madly in depth, Leeds have won just uh, one of six league games before last night. So one of six was their run. Whereas go back to November, they won seven in a row. They were 11 points clear of third place. I'm looking at the players that they're using, the number of players they're using. So only Millwall have used fewer players in the league this season. They're on 22. Leeds have used 23. So I'm throwing yeah. that all up together and I'm looking back at last season and I'm admiring, but I'm also looking at Bielsa's high pressing, high energy game. And like six games in a season. Yeah, and it's 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 relentless the championship, and I th and and sometimes the simplest explanation is the explanation, and I think well, why isn't he using twenty six players instead of twenty three or twenty seven players? And are we sure it wasn't tiredness last year? And why would that not happen this year? Yeah, I, I think I don't think it is tiredness at all. You speak to the players a lot. Yes, they're put under a strict regime, a difficult regime. This this famed murder ball that they play. You know, each um, in the training sessions, you know, sort of once a week, which has them completely on their toes. And it is, is a relentless regime, but the, all the statistics, Bielsa will tell you, show that his team were running harder, faster, longer than everybody else late on in the season. I do think it was a mental thing right. by the end of it. I, re I really do. So well, there was the game, as you mentioned, against uh, Wigan when there were a man up yeah. with a goal up at home and they lost. Mm -hmm. I was just like, this, is, this, is, this can't be happening. Yeah. Yeah, and, and when I look at that game in particular, you know, Pontus Janssen, very talented player, you know, doing really well at Brentford as their captain this year. I thought he made two really bad mistakes, got got the wrong side of the, the same player, Massey, both times. So how do you... That's not tiredness. That's just playing badly, uh, 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 making the wrong decisions at really crucial times. And I would say that continued into the next game against Brentford. Same guy was caught, you know, was caught, caught out. So that, for me, is a mental thing, really... I don't see them struggling as in for fitness or, or coping with the, with the regime. What I do worry about is do they have enough players? Because injuries are a different thing. That's not always down to, you know, being tired or what have you. But these things can have and suspensions. Calvin Phillips suspends for another two games at the moment. Adam Forshaw, we haven't seen for ages, you know. We're waiting for him to, to come back. But, you know, they've got a couple of players in, but they've only replaced the two players that have gone in Nketiah and in, in Clark, you know, with the two new lads in, Augustine and, and Paveda. You know, it's light for light. They haven't added any more. I'd like to see one or two more in, in case there are any more in. And it, it's 17 games left. 17 <laughs> games. And the thing, like, what I love about the championship is that... Um, you could go from basically flirting with relegation to very soon being on the course of the playoffs. So you you will be playing these teams, I guess, Adam. You'll be you will be towards the end of the season playing against teams who are very much on the up. A load of teams and promoting the contention to kind of either try to avoid relegation. An awful lot of teams with something to play for, and it's just it's such a long season, and that's what intrigues me. Whether Leeds will be still there. Yeah, I mean, I, I think they will. I really, I'm a, I'm a glass half full sort of guy, but I do think they're going to do it this year. Uh, at one point, it looked like both them and West Brom were going to run away with it. But you're right. I mean, look, Wigan this weekend at home, yes, not in the same circumstances as last year, but Wigan fighting for their lives. So, and we know when you look at Luton winning last night, you know, it can't hang on to anything lately. They, they just, they just, you know, anything can happen. So, so yeah. And when you look at the last few games of the season, they've got the likes of Barnes and they've got Charlton, who are probably going to be in the mix at the, at the wrong at the wrong end of the table. So. So, yeah, you're right. Every week is presenting a challenge of a different sort. And behind those top two at the moment, that is bunching up. One minute you think Brentford are going to do it. Then you think, why well, is it going to be Fulham? Because they've got the squad and Scott Parker's found his feet. And then, and on and on it goes, you know. So, so yeah, and Forest, you know, they're in a decent position themselves, of course. So, so yeah, every week there, there's something going on at the moment. And you sort of are waiting for something to come out from the middle of the table into the pack. But... I think it's pretty much there. I mean, Hull were one of those teams, like, and then they go and lose to Huddersfield yesterday. People weren't really expecting that. Huddersfield have bought well in the, in the summer. They'll probably get themselves safe. So every game has got, um, it's not a fait accompli. It really isn't. That's the craziness of it. So, yeah, it's um, nobody's counting chickens at Leeds. They really aren't mm. because of what happened last year and because of the nature of the beast. Can I ask just a broader question, Adam? The, yeah. the Premier League, to me, this season, apart from Liverpool, has been pretty non-eventful. It's been non-eventful yeah. in that, you know, you've 
kind of a, a plethora of teams who were very... I mean, the gap between 5th and 14th was, I think, four points uh, going into the weekend, and Liverpool are walking the title. Is there an appreciation in England about how, you know, the Championship in particular has just been far more exciting and engaging this year? Yeah, there is. And, and I wouldn't just say this year either. I think certainly for um, the last sort of few years... I think maybe sometimes the Premier League's relegation battle has been more interesting than, than, than the top of the table. So, yeah, but with the championship, both ends are great. I think it was described as like the, was it the eighth strongest sort of division or most sort of attractive division? You know, in, in terms in, of in crowds. Mm. Yeah, and stuff. And, and, and it's an in terms of entertainment. So, yes, I think definitely the championship is a, is a lot where people turn to a lot because it's, it is so fascinating. And, you know, and that's why it sort of needs like a Leeds or a sort of a Newcastle or whatever in it, really. And uh, Leeds fans would have me believe that's the uh, <laughs> the whole design of the football league is to try and keep them in the uh, in the championship. But yeah, but what a blessing they'll be to the Premier League and it, loads of teams. I swear, I mean, I'm actually an Evertonian. That's my team, and I know loads of people, loads of Evertonians who say, well, "I can't wait for Leeds to come up because it brings an edge and they want that occasion back," as opposed to somebody. Yeah not events that are other games in the Premier League. No, it's true. Even watching Manchester United, the Man United-Leeds games are always big events. I, I know you're obviously <laughs> primarily on the Leeds-United beat. A quick yeah. word on West Brom. What, what's the short story and what's gone wrong there? Well, because I always felt if you finish up with West Brom this season, you're going to be champions. Um, Dean Garner's a blow, isn't it, for them? Definitely you know, losing out. That's, that, that's, a, that's a blow. Um, I watch them. I've got to be honest. I think they're the most talented squad. I mean, I mean Pereira as well, who's always got the difficulties with lately. Um, when they came to Ellen Road and lost one 0 their second half was amazing. They were they were by far the best team I've seen Ellen Road. So, um, look, do you compare it to Leeds? It's just a bit of a wobble. I think they'll recover. To be quite honest, I'd still okay. back both Leeds and West Brom to to win it. So I'm not seeing a huge huge issue there. Okay. I'm, I'm really not. Uh, apropos of nothing, I was just talking to someone uh, recently and I, I, the, the Grim Up North line uh, came up, you know, and then uh, that person said to me, no, you realise Leeds is actually, as a town, as a city, reinvented itself. Like, it's a technological leading light. Is it, this is the, the case, Leeds is kind of not the Grim Up North image that we might all have? I hope this was in the, in, in the, the notes, Adam, what you'd be asked tonight as well, by yeah. the way. Don't be daft. Yeah. <laughs> it was look, Leeds. I've been in Yorkshire since I was 18, um, and I'm 53 now. And I've seen Leeds grow, and a lot of West Yorkshire particularly grow exponentially. And Leeds is a fantastic city. It really is for night out. If you want to work, it, there's so much going on, and lots of media moving in as well. With Chapel moving up, to, uh, Chapel moving up too as well. Right. Um, you know, so it, it's a great place to work, and obviously from a sport wise, it's a one club city, which is a fairly unique sort of situation. So, and it dominates and there's so much going on around it. So, um, I look, I'm, I'm not here to be an ambassador for Leeds as such, but I'll tell you what, it is a fantastic city. It's not grim at all, mm. but it's got a great earthiness and they still got that backs to the wall. Everybody hates us. We don't care sort of thing attitude when it comes to their football team, which is great. And that's what makes it unique. So, no, no, fantastic city. I, I can't speak highly enough of it. Yeah, no, I was, I was hearing that. OK, so listen, uh, West Brom and Leeds, bit of a wobble, but you're still pretty confident and this is not some kind of crisis kicking off is the short version here. That's what I'm saying. Okay. I thought Brentford would be the ones maybe, possibly Fulham now. But hey, it, this ain't going to be done quickly, this, this division. It really isn't. OK. Adam, listen, pleasure. Thanks so much. As always, guys, great. Thanks a mil. Adam Pope, BBC Leeds, giving us the view on things. I really do hope they get up because it's fun yeah. checking in with Adam. But they're, well. they're just, yeah, uh, I hadn't, I hadn't uh, spoken to him before. Um, couldn't remember his you first name. You hadn't spoken to him before? No, couldn't remember his first name. So I, call, for? I call him Popey because I couldn't remember his first name. It's like that gag of... I thought uh, you two knew each other. It's like that gag of Matt Williams on, on that, that uh, Richard Cooper has done, where it's like, well, I've spoken to you for about 20 seconds, so I'm going to call you Popey. I actually couldn't remember his first name, so I was like, how am I going to get out of this? So I call him Popey. But uh, no, because Leeds are actually a very good side to watch. Yeah. There's like all there are all these Premier League clubs, and there's an argument now that because the TV money makes it so kind of egalitarian in the Premier League yeah. that like Bournemouth, who have like really small crowds because it's their stadium, they're not much worse off than say, I don't know, like Newcastle or whatever. There's very little between them. So Leeds would bring something fresh. Like the Premier League has been pretty dull this season. 
in, in really like yes, I mean no has. Yeah. what are Liverpool 19 clear or whatever um, even the drop has been it's getting a little bit more interesting now but the, the team's fighting for fourth haven't been great um, and there's such this like there, there, there's a load of teams in the championship are closely matched but they're all fighting to get into the playoffs so and there are a lot of teams I mean there are a lot of teams in the Premier League who are probably wondering whether they want to get into the Europa League or not it's kind, of been, all, like, it's, so it's kind of been a season to just uh, enjoy or if you want ignore the Liverpool perception yeah the, I, and I'm I'm, I'm I'm kind of enjoying it you know I'm They're enjoying it but I'm I w we even were talking about this in the break there like the Champions League I think they kind of have to do it or at least perform the Champions League because I think they, they'll be tested a bit more, but uh, even Ronan was saying, you know, does, does the champion is the Champions League as much of a priority? Because it should be. If the league won, let's yeah. get on with it. And if they could win two Champions League and their first Premier League in thirty odd years in the middle of it, that would be amazing. Yeah, cements um, the greatness really. I think the Atletico game is going to be really fascinating because they're going to take on a totally different animal. Mm. Very true. Uh, calling Bielsa mad is an understatement. He would prefer genuinely to get relegated playing his style yeah. rather than winning the league in a park the bus fashion. But as a Leeds fan, my God, do I love him. There was the line, I remember who was asked about Juan Roman and Raquel May one time, and I absolutely loved Raquel May as a player. Um, but Bielsa's line was, you know, normally when one travels, one will get there as quick as he can because one will take the motorway. But Raquel May, he would prefer to take the country road and get there what he wants. And it was like, basically, he just plays the game his way. Yeah. He doesn't care about the narrative. And he, he I, don't, I think he's pretty poor English, so I'm not sure how he's, his um, interviews will come out uh, next year when, he, when he's in the Premier League and we'll see him after games, but when they're, if and when they're in the Premier League. But his teams are just great to watch. Leeds are really good to watch. Yeah. And if Bamford gets up, then it might reignite that debate about whether he might have... Well, I think it's probably done now, but... It feels that way, yeah. yeah. So uh, they're into out of time. It is Man United 1-0 up on City, but they are 3-2 down on aggregate. This is still a very passable evening for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. They're pushing for a goal. We'll take a short break, and then we're back in just one second. Football on Off The Ball With Paddy Power The greatest football partnership since Shearer and Owen The Six Nations Championship has arrived and there's only one place to hear the biggest names in rugby every day of the week. This is OTB Sports Radio Brian O'Driscoll The evolution of, of Ireland probably wasn't to the same degree over that period of time. Ronan O'Gara. What is a team player is back in your game plan, but also back in your instinct. Keith Wood. We just turf that bloody thing in the bin and never speak of it again. Alan Quinlan. I'm kind of sick of listening to him saying, oh, it's because they're the biggest playing pool in the world. The best analysis from the legends of the game. OTB Sports Radio. We'll also have reporters at every match across the men's and women's Six Nations post-match reaction and Owen Sheehan will be meeting the people. I fully believe that the Irish team lost because they want to go on the sesh in Japan. Sesh! All the way! That's the Six Nations Championship on OTB Sports Radio. Calling it with Ivan Yates. Throughout the general election campaign, I'm drilling down into each and every one of the constituencies and calling it. 39 constituencies, 39 podcasts. Now available at Newstalk.com and on the Newstalk app. Newstalk, the voice of the voter. Leading the way in the executive class has always been a mark of distinction for the Audi A6. Combining stylish design and cutting-edge technology to bring you a driving experience that's elegant and innovative in equal measure. Because whatever your journey, there's an Audi for it. Visit your local Audi dealer to test drive your Audi A6 today. Audi. Forsman durch Technik. Relax this evening and visit itsforwomen.ie. Great value car insurance for those on the go. Get the cover you need day or night at itsforwomen.ie. It's time to own it. Every year in the GAA, something unique happens. First class rivals suddenly become first class teammates. Fierce inter-county foes turn into friends, and yesterday's opponents now have each other's backs. Grudges set aside, all of the best club and county players from every corner of this country line out in their college or university jerseys to play together, challenge together, and win together. It can only be the Electric Ireland Sigerson, Fitzgibbon, and Higher Education Championships. How do you approach an uncertain future? 
with a resigned shrug or alert and ambitious to the opportunities it offers. At PwC, we think beyond the predictable. We champion creativity and agility. In a time of constant change, visionaries look for partners to enable transformation. For collaborators who see beyond the horizon. PwC. Think beyond. The horses are being hauled in, and they're off. Cane smoothies are magic, said to the early pace, with I'm into yoga now in second. Meanwhile, Six Nations glory seems to be fading fast. Oh no, there's been a fall from cheeky glass of red at my niece's christening. And as we hit the line, it's please tell me January's over. Forget rugby, forget dry January. Let the real fun begin at the Paddy Power Irish Gold Cup at the Dublin Racing Festival, Leopardstown, on February 2nd. Over 18s, please gamble responsibly. See dunlewy.net. When you sign family members up with Vodafone Red Family, our multi-mobile package, you're guaranteed the convenience of one bill and monthly savings with a third plan free when you're signed up to two or more plans. However, we're afraid you're not guaranteed the jokes in the family group chat will improve. But for guaranteed convenience, savings and flexibility, pop in store to get Vodafone Red Family for your whole family. Well, except the dog. Free plan offer based on adding Red Plus as a third plan. Contract depends on package shows and offer ends February 28th, 2020. See Vodafone.ie for full terms. Hi, Theresa Mannion here with some important information about driving during hail showers. If you encounter hailstones on the road surface, first reduce your speed without braking if possible. Driving slowly in a high gear will help your tyres maintain grip even as your tyres move over the compacted pellets of ice. Always warn other drivers using your hazard warning lights. For more tips and advice, visit rsa.ie. Whatever your journey, there's an Audi for it. Test drive yours today at Audi Centre Bracken Road, Sandyford. The Football Show on Off The Ball with Paddy Power, the greatest football partnership since Jeff and Heskey. I'm prepared to edit my camera. Well, do it then. Again. Do it then. What about your start to the game? I was, it wasn't bad, was it? <laughs> well, I should have been an honest answer for being a mistake. How can a modern... It's gone full time at West Ham, Liverpool, and it's finished 2-0 to Liverpool. Salah with a goal in 35 minutes. Alex Ockley chamberlain won in 52 minutes. Liverpool are 19 points clear at the top of the table and they're shaking hands at the Etihad. Manchester City nil, Manchester United won. This had the potential to be a tricky evening for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. They've beaten Man City 1-0. Admittedly, they're absolutely and truly out of the competition on aggregate, but that's a very acceptable performance under the circumstances for Solskjaer. I'm sure it crossed his mind as he was driving across Manchester today at 2 3 4 5 nil whooping here and it will be another few days of misery. So he'll be quietly happy enough. Yeah, uh, lost the war but won the battle maybe, I suppose, and gone over to the fans. Um, you know, when they beat Man City in the league, I genuinely thought they may have turned the corner. They looked like a team with a real counter-attack and threat that day. They yeah. lost McTominay shortly after that injury. Um, Pogba's been injured and obviously now Rashford's injured, but Solskjaer plays the fans and plays that, like, as much as he comes across, and he probably is a nice guy, he does play the, he does, definitely plays the audience. No, he's no uh, fool on that front. No, so, uh, I just, it was, they, they were still in with a bit of a chance there until Matic got sent off, that kind of, you know, screwed things over for them, but um, I just, I don't know, I don't really know where they're going, they've, they've had, uh, I don't know if you read Ken Early's piece. Their injury list has been a bit curiously long. Like they've they've had serious injuries where there's definitely question marks over whether the players should have been playing in such quick succession. Yeah. Um, we've seen well, very little of Pogba obviously for the last few months. Well, I said a few weeks ago I, when Bengal joined the club, he was slightly taken aback at how backward the medical department mm. was for such a big club. Mm. It was not cutting edge, not what he was used to. So he was a bit surprised that they had let that one slide. Yeah. So maybe that's continued to some extent or other. Um, on West Ham, so they've lost. They're a bit of trouble now. Like this Moyes thing is getting tricky for West Ham. They are just one place above the relegation zone and only on goal difference. They're on 23 points. Bournemouth are on 23 points. That hasn't yeah. really worked West Ham. I know you can't judge them too much on a loss to Liverpool. Does obviously. it surprise you though? Well, who are above them? Aston Villa, one above them, then Brighton, then Newcastle. Yeah, it does a bit. I think they've a better squad than that. Um, yeah, I, it's going to be interesting because Bournemouth have been on have been on such a poor run, but uh, they, I don't know, West Ham tonight, they're not going to panic about something no. like that, but um, 
I, I don't know would would Moyes, nece- Moyes necessarily inspire them to end the season well? I, I don't really know. Um, yeah, It's going to be interesting. The West Ham fans, just to run through a few bits of news for people, the West Ham fans not best pleased because Karen Brady has been given a £238,000 sterling bonus. The latest set of accounts were published. Probably not a great time to publish the accounts given how things no. are going on the pitch. So she is the highest paid director at the club. Her pay increased from like 898 100,000 to 1.136 million plus a bonus of 238,000. Uh, the West Ham fan group, uh, West Ham United for Change, have hit out saying she spends more time working on her brand than she does for the club. We're disappointed to see that our part time CEO, she's not part time, mm. and Vice Chairman Karen Brady was awarded a huge pay rise. And then also, and I haven't realised this, they're pretty peeved that Gold and Sullivan have been giving a loan to the club but with an interest rate, whereas they're saying, in general, owners, people with stakes in the club have given interest-free loans. So there's a bit of angst around uh, West Ham these days. And one of the other thing I saw which just caught my eye today, because you don't see it that often, Billy Key. Yes. Former Torquay United player, Accrington Stanley now. He is just 29 years of age, hasn't played for Accrington Stanley in League One since April. He scored in a 5-1 win and he's decided to retire from football due to mental health issues. He's had a long running battle with anxiety, with depression. Northern Ireland under 21 international has had a long club. He's, he's scored 83 times in 242 appearances at, at um, was it Torquay and he's been at Accrington as well. Bit of a fan's favourite. Scored 26 goals in the 2017-18 campaign for Accrington, got them into League Two. Uh, but he's just said depression, anxiety and also bulimia. And I can't, um, I can't take much more of it. So it's affected me since I was at Leicester. So he has decided, he came through at Leicester City. He's decided to pull the plug. And just to mention to the Ipswich Town fans who, um, they played Accrington last weekend and Ipswich Town fans put up a banner, Billy Key, you're not alone, which was oh, just a lovely, right. lovely gesture. Um, yeah, I, I think, I don't know, it's probably a bit like, it's just not spoken about enough in sport. Um, mm. I'd, I'd imagine there are a lot more footballers who like haven't come out as gay or whatever just because it's not they just can't come up with that burden and I think in the same way in mental health it's just the burden of come of, of, of revealing your issues or whatever just is probably too much but you'd, mm. you'd have to you'd have to admire them um, you know there have there have been the odd instance but but very little I mean I'd implore anyone to read the book Robert Inke on Robert Inke the yeah, former you, German keeper you, you said that to me a while back oh. and I started it. And I just thought, oh no, can't right now. Mm. He- very heavy going, just so tragic. I know it's exceptional by all accounts. And I, it was you. You had said it to me. And I said, right, I'll give this a go. But I just um, what what what? Yeah. I don't know if I say this to you. What really startled me about that book was there was a photo of him. I think he signed for Galatasaray briefly. But there's a photo of him in the press conference, and if ever a photograph of a person basically had the word depression in terms of his face. He just looked in in, in, in agony without yeah. being in, in physical pain. Because his daughter had died, wasn't yes. that part of the issue and that contributed? And that yeah. exacerbated it. But what struck me most about the whole book was he was able to park his issues on the pitch. Mm. And he was, he used to write a diary and towards the end he literally could barely put three words together in two weeks and he just, he just physically could not do it, mm. yet he was able to perform. And you couldn't really tell on the pitch that he was suffering. Mm. And uh, that's, what I, 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 that's what I think is staggeringly um, deceptive about depression and mental health. People can park it. Mm. And in fairness to Billy Key, he's probably had enough of that. Yeah, it's terribly sad. Still only 29 and has obviously felt he just has to park football and focus on his health, so we wish him well. It's rare you see that. It's rare you see it get to that point where somebody retires for that reason. but. That's where he is. And uh, we mentioned at the top of the show as well, in other bits of news, Callum Robinson, who's been with Sheffield United this season, has gone on loan to West Brom, who we were just talking about with Adam Pope. And Scott Hogan has made a loan move from Aston Villa to Birmingham. So that's some Irish news. Uh, we're pretty much done for the evening. Johnny Ward, thanks so much. Counting for down to the Six Nations. Whew. Joe's TV debut for 2020, 2020 vision. It's an incredibly exciting time for everyone, Johnny. Do we win the Six Nations? No. 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 Do England win the Grand Slam? No. No? One of France or Ireland. 
might do a number on them. The French thing Wales. intrigues me because I was reading that like they're just they've invested a lot of young players yeah. and now all of a sudden they've. It's, it's going to be a fascinating experiment. So like this whole let's build for the future thing is said everywhere. France have one player who's over 30 in a 42-man squad. Which is a direct contest to Ireland, to a very old squad, actually. Yeah. They have 20 players uncapped in a 42-man squad. Wow. Finish. They are going for four years' time, so it's fascinating. And they're coached by one of their ex-really good players? Yeah, Galtier. Galtier. Yeah, 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 so. So it's all kicking off. It, 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 could be, it could be an unpredictable Six Nations then, that Ireland have a chance, but France are kind of a team to watch, and Scotland have... No Lost chance. their quarter, look, their out half because yeah. of. Uh, it's pretty open. England, mm. France, Wales to a point, although they've a lot of injuries in Ireland. You've, you're hijacking the football show here, Johnny. There's people not happy. Will we play expansive rugby? Wow, well. Well, well, well. well get, Stephen, get, Stephen, get Stephen Kenny in charge and then we'll see what we can do. Uh, here we go. Uh, right, Johnny Ward, thank you. Appreciate no it. Back in one sec. Football on Off The Ball With Paddy Power The greatest football partnership Since Jeff and Heskey The humble butcher Oft the underrated craftsman Purveyor of quality cuts Hold on Let's just tell it straight McDonald's get 100% of their beef From Irish board via Assured Farms only quality whole cuts of Irish flank and forequarter go into those McDonald's burgers we all know and love. Oh, and a pinch of salt and pepper. Which is good to know. <whistles> Served after 11am. If you're going to play that playlist, shouldn't you hear it with the best sound possible? And if you're going to be on the go, shouldn't your phone keep up with you? The Seat Ibiza. Available with Beats Audio and wireless phone charger. With 0% PCP finance across the entire Ibiza range, guaranteeing the minimum future value of your Ibiza and a €1,000 online discount voucher. Simple. Smart. Seat. Start moving to your local authorised Seat retailer to find your new Ibiza. Finance is made under a higher purchase agreement and subject to lending criteria. Volkswagen Bank GmbH Branch Ireland is authorised by the Federal Financial Supervisory Authority in Germany and regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland for conduct of business rules. Visit seat.ie slash 201 to find out more. Terms and conditions apply. Get health insurance from as little as €10.27 Euros 27 cents a week because we all need a healthy mind as well as a healthy body to embrace life's changes. Search Select Starter to find out more. We know Irish life. We are Irish Life Health. Prices for one adult with no lifetime community rating loading. Irish Life Health Act is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. Terms and conditions apply. Your home is looking tired. You want to feel inspired and create a new look for less. Then you discover Easy Living Interiors Winter Sale is giving all customers their best savings yet. Velvet bed frames and chairs, designer sofas, home wares, furniture and gorgeous dining sets. A design service in store, fast delivery and more. Easy Living Interiors sale is as good as it gets. Easy Living Interiors, Cork, Waterford, Navan, Nace, Sandyford, Drada and Wexford. Sale ends Sunday. The horses are being hauled in and they're off. Kale smoothies are magic, said to the early pace with I'm into yoga now in second. Meanwhile, Six Nations glory seems to be fading fast. Oh no, there's been a fall from cheeky glass of red at my niece's christening. And as we hit the line, it's please tell me January's over. Forget rugby, forget dry January. Let the real fun begin at the Paddy Power Irish Gold Cup at the Dublin Racing Festival, Leopardstown, on February 2nd. Over 18s, please gamble responsibly. See dunlewy.net. Unaccompanied learner drivers and the owners of the car they drive now face stiffer penalties with almost 2,500 cars having already been seized. If you've had a learner permit for some time, there's never been a better time to apply for a driving test. The average waiting time for a driving test is less than six weeks and even less if you need one in a hurry. Passing your test could lower your insurance costs and, more importantly, make you a better, safer driver. Visit passthetest.ie. A message from the Road Safety Authority. Think you've got what it takes to become one of the next Aldi Ireland suppliers? The Pat Kenny Show has teamed up with Aldi to showcase the best small and medium food and drink suppliers Ireland has to offer. Not only will you benefit from the Grow with Aldi Supplier Development Programme, but you'll also have the chance to get your product on the shelves in 140 Aldi stores nationwide. Enter by Friday, February the 7th at newstalk.com forward slash grow with Aldi and tune into the Pat Kenny Show weekday mornings from 9 on Newstalk for more details. Grow with Aldi. Proudly supported by News Talk. Football on Off the Ball. With Paddy Power. The greatest football partnership since Shearer and Owen.
Now, welcome back. So, Johnny Ward's departed for the evening. We won't be far behind him. We're pretty much done. So, Manchester City nil, Manchester United won. If you're just tuning in, we're watching Scott Minto and Darren Fletcher and Mika Richards make sense of that on Sky Television. 3-2 win for City on aggregate. And Liverpool, 2-0 winners against West Ham at West Ham. Salah with a penalty and then Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain with the insurance goal for Liverpool, which, uh, not surprisingly, they didn't need. So 2-0 win for Liverpool. They are 19 points clear of Manchester City. A few tweets and texts in. We have Paul Walsh, who's saying, it's great to listen to Adam Pope. We had Adam Pope on from BBC Leeds on Add Off the Ball on the football show. Great insight into all things Leeds and Bielsa for the Irish Leeds fans. Should be made a regular feature. Well, I guess he is pretty regular. And if they get up to the Premier League, it will become a whole, not, a whole lot more regular. And by the way, Paul, I'm presuming you are a Leeds fan. End of call, we'll be speaking to Stephen McPhail about his time at Leeds under David O'Leary on Team 33 next week. So keep an ear out for that. On uh, young footballers going from here to the UK and education and different bits and bobs, Steve Highway refused to sign pro forms for Liverpool until he finished his university course. Bob Paisley was happy to wait, says somebody. Uh, he earned a degree in economics. And somebody else, great point, guys. One of the biggest travesties under the former FAI regime was the refusal to develop an academy. Great show, as always, says Ned of Nace. Ned of Nace, thank you very much. I don't know if it was like an outright refusal to build an academy, certainly a dereliction of duty, or maybe, given the system, given uh, how us farming youngsters off to the UK had worked well for quite a long time, it was just seen as an adequate situation, but it's certainly changed now. Anyway, regardless, we are done. Our breakfast show is back at you tomorrow, half past seven, OTB Sports Radio. Jaron Owen will have Andy Minton on the show, Kieran Donaghy as well, and John Duggan talking golf. Tomorrow night, we're back at seven. John Giles, Fiona Steed looking ahead to the Women's Six Nations, and we'll check in with Billy Walsh, who, as you all know, is now head coach of the U.S., is a current stable of amateur boxers. Tom Dunn is on the way next. Good luck. Give my ball and he out of grass. Give you a move for the perfect pass. Give my ball and he out of space. He'll give you a move with godly grace.